so in this particular session, we're diving into an interview that looks at uh, the music industry and is, is there money in it, yeah? So we're going to look at the uh, the business aspect of it as well. So in studio, I'm joined by uh, Damon Shinet. I'm so sure this face, eh? this face is not new to all of you, a couple of you, I guess. Uh, from the Shunet Forever. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Welcome. Asante sana. Yes. So shout yeah. out to the people back at home. Yeah, my wife and my babies, Rain and Reina, who are one, by the way. Yes. Yeah, I've been you a father for. Following on YouTube. Uh, it's by the grace of God. But okay. it's an amazing thing. I'm going to talk to you about the grace of God. Grace, grace. confirm. <laughs> Your wife. <laughs> Uh, we thank God for social media. Uh -huh. yeah. So the reason why we're here, uh, Damon, it's because of your music. Mm -hmm. uh, so tell us, uh, when did you start uh, doing music? Well, I started music when I was pretty young. Well, I started every, every artist started music when they were in primary school, I believe. Like, that's what I want to think. Mm -hmm. And then you, you're trying to find yourself and discover yourself. But I actually recorded my first um, mixtape or recording. I did a, an album of 21 songs. Mm -hmm. When I was in high school, that was yeah a while back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then after that, uh, I went back to school and then like mm. that and then now in 2019 is when I decided to like now um, do a major comeback. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, producer yeah, 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 and, and it was interesting uh, to look at, like, it's very interesting to look at my journey and how I've evolved and how I've grown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, at what particular point did you decide that you're going to get into this? Like, uh, because I believe there's that particular time whereby you're doing it for passion. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's that part whereby, like, you know what, I'm investing in this yeah. and I'm looking forward to get my returns. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's actually very interesting because, you know, music, like any other uh, business, is there has to be you know returns on investment or something Very like that true. but um i want to say this that the way our industry is set up as as a kenyan artist especially even as a gospel artist mm -hmm. in kenya first of all like we have not been taught how to appreciate music as an art and as a product so what we were taught is when when i got into the music industry this is how it used to work um you want to perform you come to our concert we will give you a platform and that platform is helping you, not us. Exposure. Yeah. So someone else would charge at the gate, mm -hmm. but I would be so happy to get an opportunity to perform. At a company, five sec five minutes, ah. two minutes, you feel like you've already achieved because... You're there for the passion. You have to... You love yeah, what yeah. you do. That, that's now the trick because they know you have a passion for it. And then there's someone else who looks at it and says, hmm, I can be able to capitalize on this because they don't have the knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know, knowledge is very key. And that's why the Bible says that my people perish because of lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So looking back at our industry and the way it has been is that you as an artist, you're being helped. You go for an interview, we're helping you. You go to a radio presenter, they want to play your music or you want them to play your music, we are helping you. And so the way our industry was set up, it was set up against the Kenyan artist. So what they did was they would play international music so that if you want to get on that platform, they say, we already have Chris Brown, we already have mm. these other people, mm -hmm. so we don't need you, you need us. So why don't you pay us so that we can play your music? Mm. And that is how the industry has been. Number two, the number one source of revenue for all artists globally is royalties. Mm -hmm. Like when, when an international artist releases their, their music, they know that the, the biggest, where they're getting the biggest share of their money is from royalties. Now look at our Kenyan... But our story uh, is different. Yeah, look at our Kenyan industry. How do you collect 200 million and then you say you used 80% of that money uh -huh. to, as a running budget for the office and then you pay artists with 20%. Like it doesn't make sense. Okay. And I, I feel it's the problem that we have as a nation, you know, the corruption issue, so it creeps in. So um, we have royalties at the top and then after royalties you have now perform now you have uh, things like concerts mm -hmm. now in abroad how they do it is an artist would come up with their own concert people pay for tickets and that's what they call tours so as an artist i have an album i want to go on a tour so i am not involving any other third party it is me who is running it so i'm investing in the concert this is the product the product is the entertainment me is it not the, the same uh, scenario situation back here no. oh, you, you cannot get, start your own uh, uh, 
create your own event concert now that is that is, that is where um, that is where we are headed and that's where i'm headed and that is the direction that i took but i just wanted to paint first of all the scenario that we are in as artists so we we have to wait for a certain promoter to plan a show and then you you go and join ah, on that show you get, I get that's it. how your fans will get to see you mm -hmm. because we are afraid of investing in it because we are afraid that we are not going to get returns because from the very beginning we were placed in this position of fear that you're not making money out of your music your product is not good enough mm -hmm. your product is, no, is not so good we are helping you you see you are the one who is in need as we are helping you by pushing your product by playing your song we are helping you but what they don't tell you is they need you because without you, that promoter would not have that call. Very true. Very yes. true. Very so true. now, um, I, I feel like the, the, the direction that I have chosen to, to go, mm -hmm. and, and, and I believe I'm doing this because of the next generation, because you see now I'm a father now. I think, oh, so. I had to rub it in <laughs> on your faces. I'm a father now. Yeah. With amazing, actually, twins. Yeah, yeah okay. twins, Rain and Raina. Okay, so let's look at it. I, I like the way you brought it up, because now we are changing the perception, because yes. now artists were waiting just for events. So someone mm -hmm. just comes up with events. Now we get invited to perform and everything mm -hmm. else now being in a position to just shift that mindset yeah. and be in a position where you're looking at it as a business yeah. and be like i'm going to start up a concert yeah. and i'm you know spearheading the whole thing and also inviting other guests yeah. which is quite interesting yeah, yeah very interesting so uh how does the music business work uh, just in details um in general, how it works is what I, what I was telling you before. Mm -hmm. So there are two models to, a, to an artist. There's an artist who is under a label who is being managed, and there's an independent artist who decides, I don't need any other person to come into my, my art and my music. I'm going to do it by myself. Okay. Now, there are advantages and disadvantages to each and every side. Now, this is how I will break it down. So you have an artist. This is how the business works. The product is the artist, the brand, mm -hmm. the music. Mm -hmm. You get the music, the videos, how you present yourself, your form of entertainment the artist is the brand is the product that we are trying to sell like this is the conversation that we had with my management team damon is a brand that we are pushing all of us mm -hmm. so my management team we are three of us so we said this is the brand that we are pushing including myself i am pushing that product because it is a product we are trying to sell so how do you translate that product into income um, so I did an album called Growing very recently mm -hmm. and I decided that you know what I am not going to do it like everyone else has done it before because I've done music before like there's so much I've done music I've put them on all these platforms that people advertise you put it on this so that people can get it as their ring back tone but what they don't tell you in fine print is that in the contract you would find that they have written they take 70% uh, you take 70% and then you take they take 30% but what they don't tell you is you're taking 70% out of like the, the the company that is providing the platform takes 70 percent of the majority share like the if if your music is the product your music sells a million shillings the mother company that provides the platform will take seven hundred thousand wow so you are dividing you're taking 70 percent of three hundred thousand mm -hmm. which you're dividing with an, with another third party which is in the middle so I, what I decided is I want to eliminate the third parties from my music. So I'm, I'm not going to put it on any other platform. I'm not giving, going to give it to anybody else. I'm going to, sell it my, the, I'm going to sell the music directly. So what I did is the album is out. It's on my platform. My, 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 my own website, I have the link. So if you want the album, send me a thousand shillings and I will send you the link. And can you believe that within the first month after the album was released, I had made 200,000 shillings. When was this? Yeah, it was recently. Was it September, I think? Yeah. Last year? Yeah, September last During year. During COVID? 2020, yeah. All oh, right, that brings another question. Yes. There's this an, uh, perception that, uh, which I think a part of it is quite true. Mm -hmm. During this time of COVID-19, someone will be thinking, am I going to spend like a thousand mm -hmm. and just probably uh, uh, buy an album or go for a virtual concert? Yeah. Or am I just going to think about, uh, you know, basic needs, my food on the table? Yeah. So w what would you say on, on that? Um, this is what I would say, that you know we are human beings, mm -hmm. we, are social, we are social beings, that is how we are created to be. And just as, as I, I want to believe that the same way you need food for your stomach is the same way you need music for your soul. Like that is how I look at it. Like how, how would we be without music? Like so now, how do you position yourself in this current time to be able to meet the needs that this person's soul needs? Because that is how you have to look at it. Um, so that people can see, because there's value that is needed. During COVID, people are depressed. So now 
now we need to make music that uplifts their spirit. That becomes a product that you can sell during COVID. So virtual concerts, yeah. they are legit. They can actually happen. Yeah, they, they can actually happen. And that is what we are trying to do right now. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we are doing a, a virtual concert called Growing Pains because growing up is hard to do, to be honest. Like, it's hard. Mm -hmm. And then um, the platform is called Show For Me. The, the album will be streaming live on a platform called Show For Me. And we are charging $5 per ticket. Mm -hmm. So you can just pay $5 and then you, you can pay using your card, using M-Pesa from wherever you will be. You can be able to stream and watch the concert. Right. Now, the concert is not just a music concert because I'm a minister as well. So, you know, your soul is going to be fed. Your spirit is going to be fed. And then you're going to be uplifted. Eh. So during COVID is when you need this concert. See, so you've marketed yourself. Okay. We'll be like, this. Uh -huh. you're going to get value for Guys, your money. Buy the tickets. <laughs> I'm telling you, yeah, you have to get value for your money. And that, that that's how I've done my music. Uh -huh. Like if you listen to my music, it is not conventional gospel music that mm -hmm. everyone else is making. Mm -hmm. My music is not music that you would, um, okay, some of them you would hear them on radio, but some of them are not songs to be played on radio. Mm -hmm. They're just songs that can minister to you, that can talk to you, you know? Mm. Yeah. So how much have you invested in your, in your, hey. in your music, uh, uh, <sighs> music, audio production, video, hey. since, since let's, not even when you started, let's look at the album, yeah. just the album. Um, hey, the album, watch, uh, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot. Um, it would be somewhere between half a million and a million shillings. Mm -hmm. But um, what I want to say is that I am grateful because at this particular time, I can be able to see that there is a return on the investment that I've made. And I wish other artists could replicate the model that I'm using. Mm -hmm. Because it is a model that eliminates fear. Stop being afraid. What is it. that model? Tell us. Yeah. What is that model? The model is just eliminating fear, first of all. The mm -hmm. Bible says that we have not given you the spirit of timidity again to fear. Sorry, I'm preaching on your show. But of soundness and of, of a sound mind. You get what I'm saying? So what, what, what I did is... I have a product, this is the album. You want it, you pay for it. It is not free. Because for a very long time, artists have been begging people to listen to their music. So I release a song, then I come to your WhatsApp and ask you, please, can you go and watch and support me? Please, can you go and watch? And it's free. So because of that, people have devalued Kenyan content and Kenyan music. So what I decided is, I'm going to put value on my music because I know what I've invested in it and I know what I've put in it in terms of art. So if you want my music, pay for it. I, when I did my concert, I did a concert during COVID, by the way, and the tickets were going for 2,000 shillings. And the concert was sold out. But I was willing to risk um, investing in that concert because I was, everyone was being paid, everyone was under payroll because it is, it is my product. So if I make a profit out of it, I make a profit. If I make a loss, I make a loss. Because that is what business is. You have a product, you have people, a market that needs that product. So how do you make this market pay for the product so that you can get your share? All right. I'd like you to speak to us about the perception because we have so many talented young people out here. Yeah. And when they think about getting into music, they want to get into, you know, all hands through, which is okay, 100%. Mm. Uh, but also they have to be realistic to the mm. aspect that it's a form of investment like any other business, yeah. you have to invest. So um, do you have any other source of uh, income or source of a living whereby you retrieve that to just invest here? And how important is it not to just, uh, when starting off, not to rely on music 100%? Ah, definitely. It's, that's a very, very good question. And it's very important for people to know how what the reality looks like. Because when I was in high school, I used to think, yo, if I release a tape, it, it times like a CD. if I get a CD with 10 songs mm -hmm. and then it plays on radio, I'll be going for concert for 5,000 shillings. If I get four concerts in one month, that is 20,000 shillings. So if I get 20,000, I can do a video. If I do a video, I'll be played on TV. If I'm played on TV, I will. my value will go up. So I'll charge 10,000 for a concert. The whole thing was just then, playing in your yeah, head. Yeah, in your head. You know, that, that's, that's how poor people make think about money. You think that, you know what, I'm going to get that 10,000. If I get two shows per week, that is 20,000. 20,000. 20,000 in a month, that is 80,000 shillings. Mm. Why should I even be in school? Because <laughs> 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 Then you get on the ground and you realize that uh -huh. um, it doesn't work like that. Like it, it costs money to mm -hmm. invest in a brand that people will recognize because first of all, like there's a lot of money that goes that is not seen. Like you cannot account for it. Mm -hmm. Money that you pay your stylist, you pay your directors, you pay your money management team you pay so you have to when you get into music this is what i would tell you because our industry currently does not have the capacity to be able to feed an, an upcoming artist 100 percent first of all diversify get a second source of income in my case i am doing construction so i sell paving blocks you know cabro 
those paving blocks if you want cabro come to me yeah paving <laughs> blocks you know I, I i that is what i sell so now I'm, I'm in a position where when i when i'm doing my concert i'm not doing it from a point of begging i'm doing it from a point of i have overflow so i can be able to pay for the concert if i make a, a plus out of it well and good so i think everyone else should be able to do that i'm a lawyer as well so you I, know, <laughs> so many things i'm so i'm laughing because you're yeah. not missing an opportunity to sell us i would like a lawyer and construction <laughs> Yeah, if you want cabro, come to me. I am your cabro person, color and cabro, paving blocks, everything. So, everything. Yeah. everything. Yeah. Right, so how important is it for someone who wants to get in the in the music scene, or, or even someone who's already in the music scene, yeah. to stop looking at, them, at themselves as just like a one person, one person movement, mm. and just have an entire team, yeah. the same way as an organization would, uh, would actually yeah. go for. Yeah. Uh, when it talks about marketing, promotion, you know, mm. looking at the finance aspect of it, how yeah. important is that? It's very, very important because first of all, you have to understand that you're not self-sufficient, you're not all-knowing, you're not God. And as people, we need people. And by the way, most artists are talented as musicians, but you, you have a voice, you don't have, you don't have good writing skills. So you need a writer, you need a person to manage your time, to manage how you're doing things. You need another person to, you know, like they, there's a lot that goes into coming up with a product. And I think um, the mentality that sh someone should have is look at your music as a whole company, as a mm -hmm. business, because that is what it is. And then you get a team behind you that believes in the vision that you have and you work with mm -hmm. it. But I would discourage people from the mentality of getting signed because most young people are falling into that trap of may want to get signed. Oh, yeah. So now you go and you're signed with, they give you a million shillings and they tell you we are signing you for a million shillings. You get excited because you've never seen that kind of money. So now I have one million shillings. But what they don't tell you is they've given you that one million shillings as a down payment, like they have to make their money back. So your music, how you make your music, how you perform, wherever you will go, they will have to make their money back. Do you feel like, yeah. also, sorry sorry for cutting you short, yes, okay. do you feel that if, when you're uh, in the same situation whereby they have to make their, make their money back, yeah. do you feel like they will, you know, put on pressure on you to release a hit song, release the next one, yes. just for them to just, you know, gain their money back? And how, if, and how does that affect? like affect uh, the artist probably because uh, a lot of issues about mental health yeah depression because yeah. you want the, another hit song because yeah. you know the, the I, I thank god because i think i'm the best person to talk about this because i'm a lawyer as well so i understand how contract law works so in contract what they what they give you when they tell you that you're signing under them is you're signing a contract and i don't know if you've had this notion of people saying that you've sold your soul it's actually when you sign a contract they there are clauses that say you're signing away your rights as an artist so you as an artist you're being managed by those people so they will pick what songs you're going to sing they will decide when those songs are coming out they will decide how the video is going to look like whether you like it or you don't you're you're a product them they're the people who are managing you so that is what they talk about so you find that the song that you wanted to put out is not what they're putting out because under the contract they choose the song to put out mm -hmm. you find that the way they brand you in the media or on social media it's not how you would want to be branded, but you signed a contract and they have to make their money back. So you have to pay for everything that for that money that you were given, you will have to pay for it. Yeah. So I, I, I think um, yeah, that depression and how people are, are, are getting lost, it, it's because you had this vision and this picture of how your music was going to be. And then you trusted it to the wrong people. So you gave other people. Um, to tell you how your music was going to be. Now, when that dream is not realized, of course you get frustrated oh. because you have a big name. And this is the problem with the Kenyan industry. You have artists who have who have big names, but they don't have anything. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I can tell you artists who you think are celebrities and they've made it, but when you when you go to Ata 500, Yachakula, someone doesn't have. Mm -hmm. Because there are these third parties that are taking all the money, There's these copyright societies that are taking all the money. So now the artist has a big name but does not have, have an income, so how does that person remain sane? You're going to, you, you're going to lose your mind. Okay. And I feel like it's high time the government actually looks into this, like properly, so that you make sure that as an artist you, you, you get that. But if the system doesn't work for you, Follow me. Let's go around the system. Let's just build our own system. So to you build your system, yes. uh, a couple of platforms that you use to, you know, put out your music and also sell, uh, sell your, sell your work, your yes. product. So for now. Um, just go to my Instagram. It's damon.kenya. All my information is there. Mm -hmm. Damon.kenya. That is where I'm selling the album from. That is where you will get the tickets for the concert. Yeah, everything that you need from me, you will get it on Instagram. Damon.kenya. 
Mm, okay, yeah. so and uh, let's look at uh, how can people fo fo uh, find you on social media yeah. and uh, if they want to keep this conversation going yeah. and if they, you know, also the event, don't forget yeah. the event, yeah. yes. So the concert will be streaming on this Friday, this Friday the 16th of, is it April? The 16th yes. of April, <laughs> will be streaming the, they will be streaming this Friday at uh -huh. exactly 8 p.m. at night. So all you need to do is go to my Instagram, damon.kenya. There is a link on my bio to show for me where you can be able to buy the tickets. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you very much, Damon, for creating so time to be with us. Me. So make sure you say hi to Grace. I will. And also, we are waiting for the next Nini. Drop the, the, the next video. video will be coming out on our YouTube channel this <laughs> coming week. So, so, so guys, make sure you follow up with uh, the, uh, Damon across all the social media handles to get you updated on what he, he's up to when it comes to matters pertaining uh, his music. At Y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles. We have come to the end of the show. Make sure you create time next Tuesday 7 till 10 a.m. At Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social at underscore mutete that's where you can find uh faith across all our social media handles until next tuesday enjoy the rest of your day and take care and be safe